Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software and Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcast. My name is Will Hayes. I'm a principal engineer in the SEI Software Solutions Division. Today, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Carol Woody, Technical Manager of CERT's Cybersecurity Engineering Group. So, Carol, thanks for joining us today. Um, if we could start a little bit about your background and the things you've uh, accomplished in your career and what you're bringing to us here at the SEI. Well, it, it's been kind of an interesting trip. Um, I was actually trained as a systems software engineer. Um, and when SCI hired me in, and it's been 15 years, mm -hmm. hard to believe, um, I was brought in to work with the security people and the uh, uh, risk management groups to begin to figure out how do we start to uh, tackle the real challenges of software assurance, mm. essentially building the software so that it has operational security. Oh, great. So there's a particular project we want to talk about today, and it involves using metrics uh, in the context of looking at assurance. Can you tell us the background on that work? Well, we have been developing methods and practices uh, for key areas, uh, and I'm going to make sure I don't leave any out. Um, security requirements, um, software risk management, uh, and supply chain risk management are three of the key areas, in addition to training how to, how to do these. Mm -hmm. uh, measuring the effectiveness of their use is our real next challenge. Uh, we have lots of qualitative measures, mm -hmm. but really establishing a quantitative mechanism to begin to really seriously manage this area uh, has been um, almost the holy grail that yeah. we've been searching for. But we, we think we're beginning to to make headway in that area. Okay. So there's some compelling numbers, I think, that we're seeing in some of the publications. Um, in terms of high-level languages that are common today, you've got some statistics that help us gauge the magnitude of the problem. Can you talk a little bit about that? Through our research, we were able to identify a connection between um, security vulnerabilities and quality defects. Mm -hmm. And there's been a tremendous body of uh, research, primarily I think Capers Jones is oh, the one okay. that has a lot of the metrics on that, in terms of um, tracking defect densities mm -hmm. across various um, types of um, software products. And what we have determined through our research is that there is a 1 to 5 percent of the defects are actually vulnerabilities or should be considered vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a caveat on that. We have very limited data. Um, very few people are willing to share data about security. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what we have been able to identify is primarily linked to operating systems. Mm. Uh, and there have been some deep uh, analysis in terms of literally looking at each defect and determining what category they are. And that's where the 1 to 5 percent numbers come so in. This is an empirical benchmark that's been derived from data and systems that, that staff at the SEI and, and with insert have looked at. Um, we're leveraging a lot that's been done out in the academic environment. Okay. Uh, and then we have looked at it and really linked it to um, several of the quality pro uh, projects mm. that um, our group uh, monitors. I believe there are about a hundred projects that okay. they have detailed data on. Uh, this is primarily through the uh, the TSP process. Mm -hmm. uh, team the team software, software process. process. It's a very data rich uh, process that's been uh, deployed out and we've got a, a pretty good installed base. So you're really able to leverage that bit of research and, and field practice and bring it into a different realm for us then. Well we we are and we aren't. Mm. It was quite interesting because we were able to identify five projects out of these 100 that had excellent security and safety results. Mm. And we, we're assuming safety is closely tied. It seems to be closely related uh, to security. Mm. Well, if quality were the total answer, all 100 of them would have had excellent results. Uh -huh. So we did a deep dive on those five and really identified the linkage of 
um, critical security analyses and practices throughout their life cycle so that they were capturing the vulnerabilities early as mm. well as the defects uh, and then addressing them um, primarily long before the system was fielded um, so that they would have very good operational results. Okay. Uh, and so we have a high correlation, at least you know, in that small data set, from the use of very good methods and practices that then support improving uh, the uh, addressing of vulnerabilities throughout the life cycle. So there's a term that we're using a lot nowadays, uh, assurance, and, and it seems to relate strongly to this thinking about things up front and understanding um, the qualities as we're building them. Can you elaborate on assurance as a topic a little bit for us? Well, what we're really looking for is assuring that the software functions as intended and only as intended. So that relates to your requirements and how you define what you want it to do, but it also relates to the components that you're buying and assembling to make sure that they function the way you expect them and don't do other things that are unexpected, which may allow an attacker to cause uh, instability or, or to actually uh, breach certain parts of your um, system. So given where we are in the technological evolution relating to software-dependent systems, the possibility that everything would be greenfield and built from scratch is really diminishing. And I think it's almost zero. Almost now. zero. Many people feel <laughs> that these are really assembly, not in the assembly language context, but right. assembly um, projects where we're taking known components with assurance cases tied to them? Integration is the key word. Hmm. And it's integration within the context of where you're fielding the system that determines what it can do and the question is what it what should it do um, so you've got things in the configuration and implementation area you know you can do from an operational security perspective but a lot of the challenges we're dealing with in the security world are vulnerabilities that are designed in mm. and then others that are coded in that carry on into this environment um, so how do you recognize those and figure out how to either mitigate them or put in place ways that you can um, identify and recover from them quickly? So what's next in this um, line of research? Where are you heading? Well, that's an interesting challenge. Obviously, five data points we don't consider to be a strong enough case to really ensure that, that we know what we're doing. Mm. Um, so we are in the midst of working with several high maturity organizations, oh. and these groups actually already collect a lot of metrics. Mm. So we've got some sort of starting baseline as to where they are in terms of their life cycle. Uh, and we are looking at integrating, we're training them on our policies and our practices and actually integrating it into their policies and mm. Uh, procedures. So we're looking at establishing a repeatable mechanism great, across great. their projects. Uh, and then we'll be starting to look at their metrics to see is this consistent? Mm. Um, because then that will start to strengthen our message. Um, so essentially we've got this core idea that shows a lot of promise mm. that we're now driving out through um, some key contact organizations that uh, are interested in working with us. So hopefully we'll have a follow-on story great, to strengthen great. our message well, soon. So like so many efforts at the SEI, there's a handshake and a marriage between research and practice. And it's very interesting to see how practice drives the inspirations in research and research can enable some things in practice that uh, are really groundbreakers. So that's great that you're uh, able to work with so many other uh, technologies from the SEI and have a, a real nice sense of synergy, a, a word we might not choose to use in a lot of forms, but there really is a, a nice confluence of concepts here and it's feeding uh, empirical data to your effort. That's great. Well, there's that, but in reality, software assurance is a collaboration mm. because it is the combination of the engineering, the uh, development, the acquisition, and the um, implementation that all determine what you really can uh, do with the systems and software. That sounds like a nice vision to, um, to, for the work to 
to push people forward and, and to have them think mm -hmm. about the role they're playing. Right. Yeah, security has traditionally been kind of parallel mm -hmm. and thought about separately. But if we're going to really rely on these systems and we expect them to have software assurance, it's got to be fully integrated. So you're kind of tapping into the old adage, uh, some folks under pressure might say, we never have time to do it correctly, but we always find time to do it over. Instead of having it parallel, if we integrate it, we're really making Please. better use of our time. Exactly. Great, great. Carol, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Carol has published a blog post on this subject, and you can find that on our website at sei.cmu.edu, and you can just search for Carol Woody, and you'll find that blog post as well as many other publications on this area. Um, as always, a transcript of this podcast will be available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu forward slash podcasts. If you have any questions or wish to follow up, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.